First of all, uh, we very much like to speak about parental engagement rather than involvement. Because when we talk about involvement, it means that there, are, there is something set and you invite somebody in to contribute to it. When you talk about engagement, uh, it is about forming something together. And because, according to the UNCRC, the responsibility for the education of children is solely with the parents, regardless what national legislation says. The state, the school, nothing has any role, on it, role in it. The responsibility is with the parent. So we think that when it comes even to policy level, but of course when it comes to school level, parents need to be engaged in designing the curriculum, choosing the methodology, uh, deciding on things like uh, when uh, the contact hours happen, <clears throat> what the rules of engagement of the children are, and what is very important and is very often uh, kind of uh, overseen is that children also need to be engaged because they have their own rights in the whole process. So uh, from our perspective, parents need to be engaged on all levels. Um, in the school, even if it's not uh, compulsory according to the uh, national legislation or whatever, a school head can create possibilities for parents to really contribute and to take the parents' views into consideration when deciding on different areas of his or her work. Of course, um, there are two ways to do that. One is formal, one is substantial. The formal way is to find the nodding parents and uh, sometimes to ask them to make coffee and cakes for the teachers' meetings. What is much more important and would be much more important, but it takes effort on both sides, on both the side of the school and the parent, then we have to prepare those parents who we want to engage. They have to understand how the system works. If they are laymen, I mean, if they don't work in the education system, and that's the ideal case, if they come from real life, uh, then they, ha they have little uh, holes in their knowledge that the school or, or the National Parents Association's trainings need to fill in. There are good examples where parents are really engaged, they really are part of the decision-making process, um, but those who want to be part of the decision-making body are obliged to take a course. And actually that's the way, because otherwise you will only have those parents who are already prepared, who already come with their own agenda. And if you really want to be equitable and inclusive, and you want to include those parents who have a difficult background or a low education, then you need to help them and prepare them for that role. On classroom level, um, sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's more difficult. Um, well, the framework is set on the school level. Um, so um, the teacher works according to what has already been decided in an ideal world together with the children and the parents. But um, at the same time, there are other opportunities for involving the parents on classroom level. And um, there are very, very good examples of uh, actually enhancing education by involving the parents. Um, I will just give you two examples. One is that if you have children with learning difficulties, um, in general, it doesn't matter what kind of learning difficulties, in all countries in the world, we have small budgets. But you invite stay-at-home mothers who have time. Well, it can be stay-at-home fathers. It can even be grandparents. Um, they can support not their own children or, or their own grandchildren, but others. Uh, it's interesting to look at, uh, look back at the Include Ad project uh, that was um, concluded by CREA, um, the University of Barcelona. CREA is a center at the University of Barcelona, um, where one of the methodology they were using was actually inviting parents into the classroom as uh, assistant tutors. Um, and the other example I want to give is, I think, a burning issue in today's Europe. Uh, although we talk about it a only a little, and it's the right to mother tongue. Uh, because apart from Finland, I don't know about any country where the school system is able to provide for mother tongue education. And inviting the parents of those who 
have a different mother tongue can also support the teacher who is, I, I can imagine, lost in a classroom where you have children with seven, ten different mother tongues on how to provide the children with this basic right, which is a basic child right, to mother tongue and home culture.